Hope you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned lots and lots of stuff um, as we explore Teslas. My name is David Waterworth. I write for cleantechnica.com. If you have an interesting story you'd like to tell me, uh, I'll write an interview you and write it up. That'd be lovely. Just have a chat to me during the day or after the event uh, and we can do that. My job is to um, introduce this handsome man and to let you know where the toilets are. So, <laughs> if you go out this door, there's a beautiful yellow mini miner. Don't get enamoured by that because the toilets are just next to it, all right? So just around that corner, there are toilets. We've been told we have to be very careful what we say because there's a mob meeting, meeting next door talking about diesel trucks. <laughs> no, we haven't been told that, but it's just an interesting kind of irony, isn't it? All righty. Uh, we have a charger at the front for those of you who need chargers. Uh, please let people who need the charger use the charger rather than just everybody having a free-for-all. Um, Paul has asked me to ask you guys, who actually already has a Tesla? Alrighty. Who is, has ordered one or is looking, thinking, okay, that's a really good spread. Excellent. So we can share some good stories there. Um, I'd like to introduce to you Aaron Longfield. Aaron is a lovely guy. Um, we've met him on several occasions. He's currently the, uh, the president, Queensland president of Tesla Owners Association, uh, Tesla Owners Club of Australia. Uh, he owns four Teslas in three different models. It's crazy, I know. Yeah, he's got a Model 3. He's got two Model 3s, a Model Y and a Model X, which is the one sitting out there. Um, and he also, have you still got your Nissan Leaf? No. Oh, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. So I you don't look at it, isn't it? something with more range. Yeah. So uh, he's, the reason he's got so many cars is he runs a business. So the cars are all badged for the business and he has teams using the cars to go out and uh, install stuff. It wouldn't look good if you were installing uh, EV chargers and you showed up in a Ford Ranger, would it? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. So uh, he's an avid, avid advocate for the EV industry, a specialist EV charging installer and the director of Regen EV with three, three teams installing a variety of options. He's going to talk to us today about the car. Oh, sorry, that's Paula. Aaron is a... Oh, I've done all that. Okay. I'll take over. Hang on. Yeah, you take over. I'll show you before it works. Welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, no. So, yeah, no, thank you, everyone, for, for turning up and... We're very passionate about the uh, the brand and uh, and what the car can offer. Um, in, in my opinion, I do believe that this product is probably the best electric vehicle, but that's just a personal opinion. And I have had, as David pointed out, a Nissan Leaf in the past, um, but I believe the tech and the and the range and all the other things that Tesla do offer in their car is is more unique to the other brands. So, and we're all believers in, um, in this brand and that's why we're here today and to try and help you guys and educate you guys to, to get involved and, um, and, and be part of this, this journey as well. So, um, but yeah, thanks for coming along and thanks to the volunteers. Um, we'll get into it. Excellent. So now I introduce Paula. Hi, this is Paula. She's going to talk about the touch screen and walk around the, the interior of the car. Paul has a, a Model 3 SR Plus. Yep, I, I read the wrong paragraph last time. I'm just double checking. Uh, it's May 2021, named Bluey. Hands up those with Teslas who've got a name for their car. Nice. Oh, isn't that interesting? <laughs> You'll have to swap them later. That'll be fun. Uh, today she's in her husband's 2022 Model Y. Is that this one here? Terry, named Terry Cruz. Ah, and has a Model X on order. Paula is an avid Tesla enthusiast and a brand ambassador. In the past, she would not have described herself as a car person. Bluey is actually only, well, the only, third, only the third car she's ever owned, and she can talk your ear off about Tesla. So go for it, Paula. Yeah. Um, the first thing we'll look at is setting up your profiles. So one of my favourite things about sharing a car with my husband is that now when I approach it with my phone, it will set the mirrors, the steering wheel, and the seat to my liking. So, options for setting the mirrors, and uh, for the controls, you use the steering wheel. Then, you can change sides. The steering wheel can lift up, down, in, and out, and then that gets saved 
um, to the pro floor. Greg has a setting in here for surfing so that he's, um, if I'm not in the car, the front seat goes all the way up and adjusts a few other things so that it's um, compatible for him. Windscreen wipers can be activated from the left hand stick just hitting the end or from the screen. When you touch it on the end of the steering wheel, you can, it'll pop up on the bottom of the screen which it won't do right now because we have the trunk open. <coughs> the window wipers are so important. I think, you know, it's the most simplest thing, but, you know, you just forget about it. And then all of a sudden it rains and you're like, how do I, how do I do this? And it's, you know, you can either just push it on the side with that kind of thing, or, and then once you do that, then the little setting comes up with that. I'm lazy, I always have it set on auto. Yeah. 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 And then if I need to, like in the morning, if it's a bit dewy and there's a bit of condensation on the window, then I can just hit the stick and do it. Um, we had a few questions submitted about the what the car records. So the car will record from all cameras around it all of the time if the sedentary mode set but it will only save to the dash cam which is located in the glove box if you either hit this record setting or in the safety option I is it in the safety You can do dash cam on when you honk the horn. So you can either set it to be manually or manually do it, auto do it. So I have it on auto with the honk of the horn just um, just in case. Once I witnessed a, um, an accident, a car turned in front of me that hit another car and I was able to record that footage and provide it to the drivers so that they um, could use it for their insurance purposes, which was really handy. And, and that's important too, because like we had an accident in Tesla X, and the footage was all there to view. However, we didn't get saved, so but luckily we sort of filmed it with our phones and whatnot, and then we were, the to, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we were able to at least show the police, you know, off our phones or whatever. But, it's important once you capture the footage, you can save straight away and then it scores in there. Because it's, yeah. It's so how long have you got between it? Disappearing. Ooh, yeah. So it, it'll, keep a, it'll, it'll keep a loop of 10 minutes on the USB drive. If you honk the horn, it'll keep those 10 minutes and record the next two minutes. Um, and in, in sentry mode, it will record the same sort of 10 minutes before and a couple of minutes after of any sentry events, which is if the car detects someone trying to open the doors, like approaching the car, generally lingering around or whatever, sentry mode will save that footage as well. What's sentry mode? Uh, so that was on the safety screen as well. You're, you're going to go through all the tabs since you Well, right? since we're talking about it, I was just thinking we could go to it now. Yeah. Do we have to put extra USB drive to record more? Or you, no? you, you get a 128 from Tesla. That comes with the, yeah. you, you can check that out, can you? Or? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Like if you, you want to put a bigger one in order. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so most, all the book. Yeah, cars have been in the last couple of years, but in the glove box, all the cars of like mine have it under the dash. In the Tesla, actually, didn't actually come with it. Yeah, that's a, yeah, mine didn't come with one either. Software feature that was added later before this was sort of, you know, sort of adding hardware for the <coughs> dedicated software. Yeah. So I'll just show you on the original control screen, we've got the um, button to open the glove box. So the USB is quite safe in there because you can't just open the glove box unless you know, you know how to. So if you were in an accident and thought that someone was going to try and steal it so that they, you couldn't prove that they were at fault, it's kind of safe in there. 
Um, and on that screen we've also got the, the lights which I keep on auto as well. But to get to the dash, the video footage, if there is um, sedentary recorded, when you come back to the vehicle after you've been away, it will pop up underneath the car just along here. But if you need to look at it, you can go from the menu screen to the dash cam. So this shows um, our sedentary. So this is where we live. And this is me yesterday afternoon playing with my car. Um, my car, Bluey got the boombox put in yesterday, so I made Greg drive around the roundabout so I could record how loud it sounds and reverse back in. So <laughs> Terry captured that footage. Um, and then... Yes, I have it turned on, yes. Well, Century, Century records automatically when it detects a movement and vehicles and people travelling towards the car. It'll save that central footage. It can get a bit trigger happy sometimes if there's a, you know. Even when we say you go to park at a service station or something, you can just park it. Yeah. Will it record then? Yeah, yeah. Without you abandoning No, it's a sentry mode. It, it, you know, it sort of depends on how you've got it configured about whether it's saving, you know, you can disable it at work and at home so you're not recording, you know, you going to the car in the garage and stuff like that. It also consumes a fair bit of power, like it, it uses about 150 watts of electricity running the camera system, so over, you know, you could lose, you know, five, six percent of battery charge to just Sentry if you just left it on all the time. Um, it'll stop when it gets down to 20 to prevent, you know, the car going flat, but um, yeah, it can consume a, a fair bit of energy as well, so it's certainly worth disabling it when you're at home and at work, probably, if you fairly confident about how secure your car is when you're at home and at work, it's, it, it'd be safe better to disable it there. I didn't always use it when I first got my car, but I came back from in the car park at the supermarket to someone banging their door on my car and taking off paint, so now I just leave it on all the time. So how did you record that footage? Did you have to press... This footage? Yeah. Um, we what? pressed the horn. Oh. And that... That footage was recorded. So you, did, so you pushed the horn for this? Yep. So some random person just cut in front of us on the highway. My husband hit the horn, so it recorded the whole. Oh, it records the whole trip, doesn't it? Well, it records about, about ten, 10 minutes. minutes before and two minutes after. Yeah. yeah. And when you hit the horn, does it toot? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, it makes a sound. It's a horn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the dash cam is while you're driving, like fit, as a figure of speech. So the, the dash cam is while you, is the stuff that records while you're driving. Sentry is the stuff that records while you're parked. Yeah. So oh, they, they both get, and they get stored in different folders on the USB stick. But oh. yeah, that's the sort of two categories. So you can see across video. the top they've got yeah. the different categories. Yeah. So Sentry is the security system while you're parking, and dash cams you know, on the road, incidents and accidents. With Sentry, what? So if, uh, if there is braking or something, will that trigger under the yeah. car? Yeah, so, so vibration yeah. to the car, like bumping the car or someone forcing one of the doors open will trigger sentry as well. Yeah, and the alarm will go off and it'll record the same sort of, you know, temp it'll save the 10 minutes it recorded prior and the next two minutes. Will it also uh, notify in the mobile app? Or if the alarm goes off, and uh, the other thing in security is setting the alarm. Uh, the alarm will only won't go off when there's sentry movement, but it will go off if one of the doors is forced. Yeah. But it's not going to it's not going to message you, you know, constantly to say someone's yeah. near the car or anything. No. It's, it's when you get in the car, you'll see the little red light, and then you'll hit that, and you'll see what's happened. Yeah. If you paid for premium premium connectivity, you can watch the cameras remotely as well. So that's in this setting. So you just need to activate the live view camera mobile, mobile app. I remember when that first came in and I was devastated because my phone wasn't doing it. And then I realised I had to actually turn it on. Just another question. You got their format USB drive. Is that put a new USB drive in or something? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So if you put your own USB drive in, just format it to say that it's a Tesla format, which is, which is perfectly readable in any computer. Like it's just you know, FAT32. Um, 
Yeah, or if it's full, like it will come up occasionally. If you've recorded, so it, it never purges old Sentry or Dashcam clips. It will eventually fill up, and you can format it or you know, or just select them all and delete them. So if you accidentally hit it, you're not going to lose while it's already recorded. If you hit a format, yeah, it erases everything. Okay. Does it give you? Does it check that you're sure you want to do that, or is it automatically if you have a specific? Uh, no, if you get format, it pops up with a thing like, you know, with a message saying, are you sure, yeah. yeah. Oh, hello. Uh, hello. 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 Uh, flat encoded uh, music, yeah. and then uh, uh, the other 500 uh, is just uh, for the uh, uh, for the century and the yeah. dash cam. Yeah. So it's, it's quite easy to do. All. And I believe in the manual, uh, the user manual even tells you how to do it. Yeah, it's got better detail on yeah. So if any of those are interested, thank you. Pedals and steering, the car has different options. So I always have mine on hold. I did for, for the stopping mode. We did have it on creep when we first got it, but we found it was a very jolty. It may have improved now. Um, prior to Tesla's, I was driving a um, hybrid Camry and it used to just roll for days. It was wonderful. Um, but when you take your foot off the accelerator in a Tesla, it doesn't do that. And it um, on the whole mode, it does stop completely. Um, so those preferences are just personal preference. So once you get your car, just have a play around with it and see which ones you prefer. Creep, um, creep makes it like a traditional automatic where you put it in drive and it starts rolling forward even though yeah, it's not accelerating. It sort of pretends to be like an, an automatic car. And I like hold mode because it will even stop on a hill and it just doesn't move. Yeah, and you're not using your brake. Um, Aaron will probably talk more about the um, charging bits, but one of the important things is um, this cute little line here. If you wanted to not charge a car to 100%, you can adjust it. Um, if you go to the Tesla superchargers, depending, sometimes they may say that these are in high demand and they will only charge you to 80%. If you were starting a journey or you are on a um, long trip and you want it to be 100, all you need to do is just adjust it inside the car and then it will charge to the um, 100% for you. And, and there's nothing wrong with going to 100% with these, these cars. Uh, those batteries, the LFP batteries, are, um, they, like, they like to see it you know, fully charged and then um, all the way to, to the end as well. Um, which is, uh, calibrates everything as well, and yeah, it's just a different chemistry to the performance battery. So when you say to the end, you mean uh, down like to... Like completely depleted, yeah. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like to zero? Yeah. Okay. There's a little bit of reserve in there as well, so I wouldn't freak out too much. After zero? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how much, but there is. You don't want to push it that a long way from home. No, yeah, don't push it that way. I think it's minus 5% that is the best item. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Just like a petrol car, when you get, it tells you, you know, the warning light comes on, you know, you've got, I think my Camry had seven litres of fuel, so I could drive for ages, but um, some cars don't have quite that much. Um, autopilot, we have everything turned on. You can. Um, have a speed limit warning. I always, oh, my car has forward collision warning early. Greg obviously prefers not to be notified so soon. He's got it on medium. We hired a car through um, EV when we were in um, Melbourne one time and we were driving to Bendigo for a wedding and it was a Model 3 the same age as Bluey it was delivered within a few days 
um, but it didn't have the um, auto steering um, calibrated properly and we drove on the highway and we actually had to physically drive and we were devastated because we'd got out of the habit. We'd had Louie for a few months and we got out of the habit and we were really looking forward to um, letting it do that drive for us. We have quite a few um, key options in our car. Both of our phones are connected as keys. We've got a key card each. Plus, Greg has a ring for when he goes surfing. So when he's surfing, he can turn the Bluetooth off on his phone, pop it in the glove box, and when he return it, uh, then he can lock the car using the ring, which has the little chip similar to the um, key cards you're given that will um, lock the car. So we've had those all, we've programmed them all in. Um, if you have a Google Watch like that, you can, there's an app you can buy that will act as a key as well, so you can either you know, Bluetooth it or tap it on the pillar the same as the car, and you'll unlock the car as well. I think Samsung have the same option yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. That's, this is, yeah, Google slash oh, Samsung, yeah. 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 That, that and Apple system. have the same yeah. one as well. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Light. Just, I just want to point out one thing. See the little information logo next to a lot of the titles, the little eye there. You can tap on that eye and it comes up with an explanation of what that that it is about. So um, it should be really handy, uh, particularly if it seems like a more complicated option. And yes, I've become quite a lazy driver in a Tesla. Everything's on auto, so I don't even have to think about it. Um, display just all personal preference, how you, whether you want the um, percentage at the top here, whether you want that as a distance, obviously whether you prefer kilometres a mile or Fahrenheit or if, Celsius. If you, well, one thing, if, if you're a little offended by the terms frunk and trunk, you can change it to British English and you'll get boot and uh, Fruit. Yes. Yes, you've got the choice. And it changes in the app as well, like all of those, you know, um, unit settings, whatever, are, are what gets shown in the app as well for that car. Um, trips, just the odometer, you can, you can reset them. We always keep one. Um, as a do not delete, just so that we have a bit of a competition to see who gets a better <laughs> um, average there. So, <clears throat> um, navigation, once again, I just turn it all on. Um, but another thing that you can play around with, I don't like the computer talking to me, so I turn the volume <laughs> off and I can just um, watch it from the screen. So, if I was to say I was going home, it'll come up. If I open something else up, I might not do it with the car open, but the navigation will come across the top of the screen there rather than um, down the side here. My favourite thing, even if I know where I'm going, I often put it in, navigate it in because when you scroll to the bottom, it, once it'll tell me, one thing it'll tell me is the charge I'll have when I get to that destination, and the other thing is if I'm doing a round trip, it'll tell me what I'll have, you know, if I can get home, pretty much, without having to charge, so I always find that quite handy, um, even though I don't need to know where, I'm, I don't need directions for where I'm actually going. If I was, um, If we wanted to go to Sydney, the car will actually come up with the charging stations that you'll need to stop at. And it will actually let you know here how long you need to stop at each one. Just to give you a bit of an idea. Um, Luke will talk more about that in, in his session. One, one thing though. While, while you're there, for the, yeah. for the interest of, of what I'll talk about later, yep. can you, if you could go to the navigator, yeah, put it in that, and then slide across to charging. 
Yep. And take out the charging option. It'll show you all the charges that are around where you are. You can turn on and off the slow, fast, and medium options at the top. So to turn on the slow one, you can see all of the like destination charges around. So like hotels and other venues that have got just AC charges, uh, which can be quite handy if you're looking for somewhere to stay. Like you could use this to actually plan your trip. Like scroll around Australia and find a motel that's got a, a charger in it. When you're staying overnight, you'll be able to use a charger there. That was all. Sorry. Thank you. Um, another thing, just while it's in the car as well, is that um, I'm going home, but I might want to edit the trip. Oh, not end the trip, I want to edit. So I hit the little bits at the side, and I can add a stop. So I can say that I'm going to stop here on the way home. Then I can actually even go in here and, you know, add an extra stop, you know, extra things. You use the little grips on the left to, to rearrange them as well. Yeah, and I can... It usually adds them to the... Any ones you add get added as the next stop, but you might be wanting to add a stop after where you're going already, so you can rearrange them with what order there is there too. And you, yeah, and yeah, once again, that's one of the features I use a lot, just, just so that I can see the battery at the end of it. Um, safety, we ran through most of that, so I don't bother with the sentry mode at home, um, only because it flashes lights and can be a bit um, distracting in our cul-de-sac, so it's not handy. Um, service mode's interesting, because they are, they have just changed this, um, <coughs> in the latest update, but currently what we can see is the, obviously tyre pressure, you can see the manual, um, I think that's also accessible in the app, isn't it Luke, yes. the manual? Yeah, the yeah. Manual, yeah, you get the manual in the app or, or online as well, just Google Model 3 Manual Australia and... Question with the app page, sorry, with the app page, they automatically get downloaded with the car and do you have to do anything? Yeah, and... It used to be a PDF like that you'd flick through, but now it is a web, full web thing. So it's got embedded videos and sounds and things like that. There's a whole section on you know um, sounds that the car makes and whether they're okay or not, and then you can actually listen to them in the manual, which is pretty cool. So when there's an update due, you'll get a notification on your app. You'll yep. also see a notification on your screen, and you can schedule that. So you can say, do it in the middle of the night, or do it now. So it won't just happen without you tapping the button and telling it to. It's first to do it when you're not at home. Yeah. Um, first you'll need to download it, so you, the car will need to be attached um, and connected to the Wi-Fi, so um, our cars are connected to home Wi-Fi, so when they're in the driveway. So a little arrow will appear up in the corner here, um, I think it faces down and it's orange when the download's there. And so in the software section, it'll come up um, along here, and then you um, can connect it to a Wi-Fi, and then it will download, and then what Linda's talking about, the uploading of it, will just be um, what you do when you don't need to use the car. So you can't just download it from your phone? No, it does it in the car. Yeah. Yeah. No, the car downloads itself and then you'll get time to install it. You can set it. It'll, when, when you get in the car and there's already downloaded an update, like just so generally, you connect to the Wi Fi and you don't care about it, ignore it, and it will pop. Yeah, it'll, yeah, yeah, right. So uh, it will eventually download it over 4G, yeah. like anyway. Um, you just get the uh, you get those updates a fair bit less often than you would have if you connected the Wi-Fi, and eventually it'll download it. It'll pop up a thing saying, "There's an update ready to be installed. Do you want to install it now, yeah. um, or do you want to schedule it to install?" And you say, "Install it at 2 a.m." Let it do its thing. Yeah, it'll make a lot of racket while it's doing an update. It'll turn on the fans and run pumps and do all sorts of weird things while it's doing that update as it goes through. 
updating the hundreds of components in the car. Every little motor and pump's got a computer in it, and every one of them runs a little self-test routine when it installs the software, and, and that's fine. And to find the Wi-Fi, did you just go into that top right hand? Yeah, yeah. yeah, just tap on that, and you can pick a Wi-Fi and then type in the password. You can manage which ones are saved in Wi-Fi settings. You can um, hotspot it too. Yeah, yeah, so if you don't have um, mobile coverage in your garage or whatever, you can just hotspot it to your phone, yeah. Uh, the update's are fairly large, um, 700 megabytes-ish, so it depends how much data you've got on your plan, I suppose, but if you've got a pretty tiny plan, you might be concerned about that. When I woke up on Friday, Terry had an update and had already downloaded it, so I did the upload, you know, while I was in the shower because I knew Greg wasn't going to work for a few hours and it'd be fine. And I went off to work and Louise popped up when I finished work. So I hotspotted my phone to the car and then it was ready to... The download was complete by the time I got home and it was ready to upload um, when I was there, which was really cool and handy. Because I thought I was getting Zoom in my car as a new update, but threes don't get it, only Ys. What? Yeah, so that's why I was really excited for this update. I'd seen people say, yeah, now we can do this, but yeah, it doesn't happen to a three. Uh, not, in, not in this one. Um, so as Luke explained before, these just tell you, you know, there's, if you're connected. There's a couple of things in the service we didn't go through that. We to... That we didn't go back, you yeah. want to go back to? Yep, okay. Um, car wash mode, that's so that it winds up all the windows, folds everything in and keeps the charge port closed. Yes, keeps everything locked. So you're wiping over it, it's not popping open. Oh, it doesn't do it itself? No, you have, if you pop it into car wash mode well, and you're car, washing over well, the, the, the car might wash itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the car wash itself. That's an upgrade that yeah. none of us can afford here. Yeah. Um, so there is an automatic car wash button. It's not that. But what that does is some other car washes you go to, and I know that there's one in Maruka, you drive onto a little platform and it grabs the wheel and drags the car through the car wash as it does it. Um, that's for that automatic car wash mode, it basically leaves the park brake off so that the car can be dragged through the car wash by the, by the machine. Even when you wash the car, you put it in the car wash mode too, is it? Sorry? Even if you wash your car, you still have to put it in the car wash Yeah, so in the normal, in just car wash mode, but not the automatic car wash mode. No, 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 yeah. <coughs> Yeah, I mean you can. There's nothing. I like it. This this mode didn't exist up until about a year ago, and I managed to wash my car before then. Yeah. Okay. I I actually don't think um, Greg uses it. I mean, I I get someone else to wash my car, but um, Greg washes his own, and um, I think yeah, I, I I don't think he's ever used it. It's fine. But like the, the automatic wipers and things, like they're not as they're not. They're not detecting water like a, a lot of traditional um, automatic wipers. They're detecting actual rain. They're looking for the image of rain with the cameras. Um, so when you're just hosing that, it, it doesn't go off generally. But I do use the um, clean screen mode every now and then. What does that do? Um, it just means you can wipe over the screen without, you know, if I started wiping, then all the buttons will start yeah. going. Um, You can adjust your headlights, um, which again, preference. Um, don't. 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 Like, let service do it. If you don't think your headlights are aligned properly, they've got a proper machine that does it accurately. Let them do it. If you change your wheels and you want your the car on the screen to match, you can update it. Just tell it. It will. Yeah. It'll do a thing. I'll do it back. Um, oh, uh, as in... It'll reboot. Oh. Sorry. Oh. I... <laughs> we'll, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's, it's, it's done it. Uh, you, you've got a newer computer that reboots a lot quicker than mine. Mine takes, yeah, like, yeah. Mine takes like three minutes to reboot. Yeah. Now, this, so this is a new one. Yeah, yeah it is now. Make sure you're on the 19. 
No, I didn't. I'll change it back when we finish, though. Yeah. Um, Can we request songs as well? <laughs> yes, you can request a song. If you hit the right hand um, toggle button and say play blah 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 from Spotify or wherever, whatever source you want, the car will do that. Is it accurate? It is pretty good. It's a good novelty trick that we amuse the six-year-olds with when we're babysitting our god babies or god nephews. Um, <clears throat> Um, I've got up to 42. It's 41. And yeah, like and, and if, if they're really bad, they'll turn orange and you'll get a notification on the screen. Okay. So That's generally true. ignore it. They'll vary with temperature and all. So there should be 42. 42 is the recommended cold tyre pressure. If you pump them up to 42 and then go for a drive on the highway, they'll go up a couple of psi, or if it's a particularly cold morning, they'll go down a couple from that. So it, uh, ignore minor changes. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> it's a rounding error, don't worry about it. You've got a slow leak. Yeah, and it'll detect that and warn you about it. Yeah. yeah. If they get down to, I think, about 38, they'll go orange and then tell you to do something about it. And isn't it tricky to pump them up at the petrol station if you've got the aero? Yeah, if you've got the aero covers on, um, it can be hard to get to the model. Um, and you might either have to pull the aero covers off, or you can buy a, top, a um, stem extension lead, a lot of little. Um, Put the screw on the stem first and then put the valve on. So you screw it, because I did buy some. Yeah. So you screw them onto the top of the yeah, car it, it, and then you put the thing from the... Stem. It is like an extension lead and yes. it's got a you know, socket that goes onto the car and a plug that goes into the, into the um, valve, yeah. Make friends with the tyre people at the tyre shop. Yeah, or just go to yeah, have a regular tyre shop and go there. They all do that for free. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. uh, you know, the, they hope that you'll feel warm and fuzzy about it and go buy tyres there in the future. I take if, ours if to the. If you're embarrassed about going to a petrol station and you can't stand the stench anymore, <laughs> Aldi sells a beautiful handheld battery power pump, which is what we use for our car. Yeah. And if you don't like Aldi, Ryobi sells the same thing for three times the price. <laughs> <laughs> so, whatever equipment you've got, gardening equipment you've got, you can use that battery in an air pump. And then you never have to go to a servo again. Um, I take um, our cars to the tyre guys that did our cars before we had Teslas, so they just, yeah, we'll pump them up if we needed to. Used, when we took Bluey on the racetrack, I took a, the car there afterwards just to get them to check whether I needed to rotate them the tyres or anything like that, so yeah, if you've already got a relationship with a tyre shop then they're more than happy to help. Uh, that's the other issue with tyre rotation, okay. does, it, does it notify if the tyre is getting a bit warm? Yeah, so... So then you know you've got to rotate it or do something? Yeah, like you'll that. get a warning if they need rotating or are wearing unevenly as well because, you yeah. Joy of a very smart car that measures lots of things. It's measuring the tyre rotation of every single tyre and all notice when one of them's spinning a little bit faster than all of the others because it's a little bit smaller because it's a little bit more worn. Um, and we'll warn you about that as well. Unfortunately, Terry had a um, nail in his tyre within the first month of him coming to live with us, which was lots of fun. Um, and our normal tyre guy wasn't able to get me the wheel in time, so we ended up just going with Tesla and I think it was a $400 um, changeover because it was in a spot where they couldn't repair it. I had my fingers crossed that they could repair it, but they couldn't. Yeah. Um, so tyres, um, like they do recommend a certain brand, but yeah. it, it doesn't necessarily mean that we need to get that brand that way. Uh, no, I mean, from a legal technical point of view, you need to match, match the low grading. Um, but there are certainly good reasons to buy a good quality tyre, and also the tyres that, that Tesla use that, and recommend have a foam liner in them that makes them quieter because the car doesn't have an engine. 
the, the tyre noise is basically the most of the noise a car makes, so they sell tyres um, that have got a foam sort of coating on the inside of them that makes them quieter than normal tyres. Do you buy those tyres at a yeah, yeah. place? I've, I've bought them from Costco, for example. Where's that? Costco, as an example. Costco is the Michelin dealer, so they've got, they'll, they have all the Michelin tyres. Um, uh, and my, this, this one's got Hankook tyres on it, but mine had Michelin tyres originally. So, um, yeah, so they have, they will order those, and there'll be a TO spec, like it'll be, you know, it'll be a, it'll be a Michelin Pilot Sport, you know, PS4, but it'll have TO at the end, which means Tesla option. All manufacturers have their own customised yeah, tyres. So it's a bit quieter. Yeah. yeah. And don't believe tyre places either. If you do pick up a nail or a screw, don't yeah. believe in a position that can be repaired. Some um, less enlightened tyre places will say, oh, we can't repair that because of the foam. Mm -hmm. They can. They just cut a little tiny square of the foam out and do their plug. Also, if you've used the gel as a temporary seal to get you back to a repair place, some places will carry on that, oh, no, they can't repair it. They can. They just have to take it off, hose all that revolting goo out, which they obviously don't like to do, clean it up and repair it. So be a little bit wary of places who do the old we can't. Um, if you're in a, a bind and you have no choice because you're away from home and you have to use a place, be firm. Otherwise, go and find somebody who's happy to do the right thing for you. And generally, they cannot repair if it's in the side wall or very close to, which is what um, happened to Terry's, which wasn't, I was a bit upset about. Could have gone right in the middle, would have been perfect. Um, most of the other service stuff, you know, I don't, I don't think I've ever calibrated the camera or done the seat belt or things like that. Like Luke said, service job. Oh, they're, they're pretty straightforward. So camera yeah. operations, you know, re recalibrating the autopilot cameras, you should only have to do it when you picked up a car. But if you've got something weird going on, service might tell you if you block a ticket with issues about it not being centered in the lane or whatever, they might tell you to do that. You just drive at 40 k's on the highway with, with the lines, with painted lines. You have to drive about 40 k's of painted lines before it's calibrated and adjusted where those lines are and gets a good calibration of what I've got. Um, sorry? Notifications? Yeah, so it'll tell you all the things that have ever gone wrong in the car, So, which can be really handy. And these show up in the app as well, if you log a service ticket in the app. Um, so to do service with Tesla, you always just do it through the app, and it will come up and, and in the app when you're logging your service ticket and say, do you want to log a ticket about, you know, so I, I've recently had a 12 volt battery failure in my car, and I just go in into service and says, do you want to make a ticket for, you know, the 12 volt battery failure? Yes, I do. Next Tuesday, see you then, and the job done. So you already knew what you were logging the job for. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's, it's, yeah. Well, it gives that as an option. You can add other things as well, but you know that you you want fixed, but yeah, if, if, if the car's got a fault, it will have that as an option to log a ticket for. And not come out, typically come out to your work or whatever to do that. If you're telling you that it might suggest or anything? No. Um, Sometimes the notifications pop up on the screen quite quickly, so you can actually um, go to the service screen and then just see, like yesterday, um, we turned the power off and then took the charger out instead of normally I'd take the charger out first and then turn the power point off. So it just came with a notification to say it would, and it, um, that was lost. Um, the driver seat and steering calibration <coughs> is two of those profiles, those roaming profiles. So yeah. it, it, it will make sure that the car's got an accurate understanding of where the steering wheel and mirrors and all that sort of stuff are so that when you move from car to car, your profile and where you have your seat adjusted matches in every car that you go to. And it adjusts, when, when we say from car to car, I got excited, but it actually is only from Model 3 to Model 3, yeah. and from Model Y to Model Y. I... Yeah, fundamentally the geometry of the whole car is different, so it's really, yeah. really what, what feels good in one, doesn't necessarily feel good in the other, right? I know, but I was, I was hoping it would just think for me. <laughs> All the other stuff would run though, right? Like, like you know, auto headlights and stuff like that. Yeah, just, yeah. Just, just <coughs> All your preferences, yeah. 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 
Yeah. Even the music that I'm pay playing in my car when I drove it last, when I hop into this car, it will play the same. Like that song will play that I was halfway through playing in the previous car, which is cool. Um, Um, when you're in that mode, also, it, 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 does it tell you what sort of battery you have in your car? Uh, so this screen does. If you go right at the top of, of this current screen, it'll say additional vehicle information. You click on that. And that will tell you the details of the hardware that's in your car. So this is a fairly new car that's got a heat pump and a, a LFD battery. You can then click on those and then read information about that. Um, when we get to the charging bit, we'll talk more about the differences between the different types of batteries and how you should treat them, but um, generally follow what the car tells you to do. Um, yeah, so the, there are some some options over you know, different generations of cars as, as they've improved things. Things have changed here, so you know this has got a Ryzen computer, whereas mine's got an Intel computer. So it's a bit slower, and you know things improve over time and little bits change, but fundamentally, the, you know they're all pretty capable. Also, on that screen where it says garage door open and not being stopped, is that, yeah. is there something you can play? Yeah, so I've got one in my car, a home link. Um, so it's a GPS um, tracking um, garage door opener. So you program it, you get the you garage remote, and you hold it near the front bumper, and it learns the code, and then programs it. You, know, it, you follow a bit of a process to, to get it, the, the garage door opener that's built into the car paired to your garage door. And you set it up so that as you approach your garage door, it opens it automatically. Yeah, that's a cold 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 cold. Cold. $460, I think, is that a module? Yeah. Is there any other brands that you have? Oh, there are other third party things that just run as an app on your phone. Like, you know, do the same sort of thing that when your phone's within the area of your house, it automatically opens the garage door open. None of them are. The home, home link's remarkably reliable and works really well. Um, uh, I did a whole bunch of home automation things, so I had like arm and disarm and whatever menu options for my house, so I could you know, arm, <coughs> arm and disarm the alarm system, which would open the garage door and all that sort of stuff. So for those people who are sitting waiting for their Tesla to arrive, um, this all is a lot of information to try and remember. Yeah. Just remember that you can get in the car, pop it into drive and drive home without worrying about any of this stuff and when you get home you're going to spend several hours in your garage fiddling around having a lovely play with this stuff <laughs> so don't worry about you might want to set the seat mirrors mirrors before you drive off but you don't need to worry about all of these details to leave the um, showroom where you've picked it up just Set your seats, set your mirrors, drive yourself home, and give yourself plenty of time to have a lovely play with all of this stuff. And once you've got it all set up, you're going to save that configuration to your profile. It's going to reset the car for you to all of your preferences every time you hop in. And you're going to adjust a couple of little things, and then you're never going to go near it again. So don't stress out about trying to remember all of these details. This is giving you a nice overview of how these things work and it'll come back to you, but don't panic about getting home from the showroom. Um, as we move on, upgrades are what I call the, oh, no upgrades today. Um, In-app purchases. We're obviously subscribed to everything that we need to. Um, now, this screen that you would um, go to from the bottom is all the kind of fun stuff. So, we predominantly use Spotify, but I can go up here and then change it to anything. And, you know, now Apple Music was an update recently because that wasn't on there when we first got the car. I mean, if you um, just like to listen to radio, um, you can literally listen to whatever digital radio station that interests you. It'll do FM and DAB digital radio. Um, there's no AM radio, which is getting fairly common. If you want to listen to AM, the AM radio stations, you have to stream them. So using TuneIn instead of the radio and stream them over the internet and you'll need premium connectivity for that. 
My favourite is the <coughs> car karaoke. This is how you keep kids amused in the car when you're doing a long trip. Oh, I pull the disco ball out when I'm, the, I'm in the car on my own. Um, but, you know, it gives them something to watch on the screen. The words jump across, they can sing along, they think it's great. The car will ask if the passenger is um, using the screen because it's one of the options that can be done while the car is in drive. Um, some other fun bits, the... Um, Toolbox. You can you can change the colour of your car by just. just that's, that's not actually uh, the hmm? custom, the oh. Oh, yeah. oh, from that part. Yeah. There you go. I don't do that. I like my car the colour it is. Yeah, if you click the bottom right, it'll set it back to you whatever factory colour it is. Um, light show is always fun. Um, that was a nice upgrade a couple of Christmases ago, and now we've got a um, second one. You can also download um, just from the internet from third parties different light shows and plug it in from the USB. This one's probably the most. We'll show you. We'll show you at the end. Yeah, the car just does a little song and dance on its own. Windows go up, boot goes up. Yeah. Um, it's quite fun at night because of all the lights on the car as well. Um, probably the most used feature for us is the fart button. Because, you know, that can keep, no that can keep six year old boys amused for an hour trip when we take them home. Um, Santa's fun at Christmas, but it gets annoying after about three minutes. Same with the Rainbow Road. Um, so these are all the fun things that you get to play with. If you want to pretend that you're in space, you can have that as your um, navigation background. Um, I'm not sure everyone here will be um, playing games in the car, but children and grandchildren will love that. It's a good way to keep them amused. My nephews love the beach buggy because they sit in the driver's seat and um, move the steering wheel to play. Just be careful if you park the car on the grass, they will create big holes in the lawn. Um, if you need a browser for some reason, you need internet while you're out in the car, um, there's another option. Just using the button that says browser. Um, another one, good one is the theatre. So. If you're waiting, if you're going to pick someone up and you've got a bit of time to wait, easily put on a show. I must say I mainly do that when there's six-year-olds in the car. Uh, Zoom, just in case you need to um, have a meeting. I was excited, Aaron. I thought we could all sit in our cars for our... Um, regular get-togethers and swap to Zoom, but my car doesn't have it, so now I'm not going to suggest it. Um, just no phone. One thing on Dr. Red's calendar, calendar is excellent. Like, um, I don't know if you've got your synchronised or not. No, no it's, so for some reason it's not even, um, I don't know where my yeah, phone is. You need to allow permissions in the app or whatever. Get the calendar working. You'll see all of your appointments on screen that are synchronised from your you know, work calendar or whatever. And if there's addresses on those appointments, it's got a navigate button next to it. Uh, and if you have in the navigation option, there's a thing called automatic navigation. And if you that will set it so that when you get in the car and you've got an appointment coming up, it's already set the nav to that destination, ready to go. You just start driving. 
so it works really well. Um, yeah, yeah, there you go. So if, if, if any of those appointments had an address in them, that it would have a navigate button next to those appointments. Um, and you can see the tabs across the top there, sort of, you know, phone calls and contacts and messages and things like that as well. So you see all your favourite contacts, those big, big tabs there. So, and that's all in the calendar app? Well, they're actually like they're all. It's connected to the phone line. app, yeah, actually. But, but there's there's, See, button, the there's buttons for all of them. Yeah. Come across. <coughs> you, you can link it to your Google Calendar, which yeah. so the invite for this on here, I'm going, and then it send it to the phone. So this morning when I jump in the car, yeah, it's navigating here straight up. Yeah. So yeah. that's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. It does make it fun. Uh, automatic navigation if you've got your home and work, uh, home and work addresses set as well in the navigation. Uh, if it's you know around going to work time or around going home time, it will be home and work. It will be automatically navigating. So. Um, another interesting one is originally when I got my car, that was the only screen that we could see, and now they've got these other little cool ones to let us know, um, you know, what's drawing power, so. Yeah. so this is somewhat in my, I was talking about planning a trip later, this is sort of an important part of that. If you're, if you're navigating somewhere, it will tell you uh, how much battery you, you will use by the time you get to your destination. It also can vary that as you go up hills and down hills, so you can sort of see how that energy has been consumed and re regenerated along the trip. Yeah, that's a the little green, green graph that's called energy. Yeah. yeah. So if you want any of those icons, it's the three little buttons in the middle. But you can actually set these ones on this side are set as um, our preferences. Um, so you, can, you can drag them in and out of that tray. You can also add wipers and steering head. Just a long press. Oh, long press. press for a few seconds. You can delete them out of that My App section and you can drag new ones in. So is that a long press on those three? Any, yeah, on no, any, just on the side. Almost any icon there, you yeah. can a long press on it, it'll go into this editing mode. Yeah. So it'll be fine how you move icons yeah. around on the screen. So Greg's got the rear to Mister in his. You can, you know, put the wipers in. If it's, I mean, in Queensland we don't use the heated seats very much. <laughs> Not well. Not on the Gold Coast where I live. Um, inland they might a bit more. Um, so that can be customised. This side shows the last used ones. <clears throat> My favourite part of the car is the aircon. As you can see, we. Um, the car is currently, um, has me as the driver, so I like my side a little bit warmer than Greg likes his, so it remembers that and sets it. I don't like the air blowing straight on me, so I can just adjust and move it to whatever I like. And Greg's has his. And in a recent update, which I was unaware of until Friday, is this wonderful button called Keep. So now when I go to the supermarket on a hot day, I will be pressing that button so the car keeps the temperature at 22 and then when I come back to the car, it won't be hot. And so can I just ask, I think on mine it's only blowing on me. How do you get it on the it, passenger? Um, you can either turn it on or someone has, it usually goes by someone sitting in the seat. So the back seats and the passenger seat will, will only turn on depending on whether there's people actually there. Oh, so it doesn't Just recognise the handbag as a person. It will. It will if it, and the car will start beeping at you. Yeah, a two litre bottle of milk and you don't put the seatbelt on your bottle of milk, it will, it'll get upset. <laughs> Um, so the keep dog and cam mode on the side there, in, so just, just to clarify the differences between those different modes, they all achieve a similar kind of thing. They're all about keeping the air conditioning on when you're not in the car or when you're not driving. So keep mode will just keep the air conditioner on, but we'll lock the car and put the security system on. Dog mode will still automatically lock the car as you walk away, you know, the walk away door lock thing, where like, if your phone gets a, you know, more than about five metres away from the car, it'll lock the doors but it will keep the security system off so that because your dog running around inside the car doesn't set the alarm off. 
Uh, cam mode will, will keep the air conditioner on and won't automatically lock the car when you walk away. So I use it all the time. I've got teenage kids. I leave them in the car while I run into the shops. Leave it in cam mode. It means that if they open the door and get out, the alarm won't go off. If you, a lot of people think, oh, you know, I'll, I'll put it in dog mode when I leave my kids and my grandmother in the car. And you leave them in the car and you go into the shops and you hear the alarm going off because they've opened the door because it's still locked the car and it will still set the alarm off if they open the door. So, um, yeah, camp mode is what you want. If, if you're leaving people in the car, you leave it in camp mode. So, can you just show us how you got into that again? You press I just hit the temperature. The temperature yeah. Sorry, just had an elbow on the camera. <laughs> you, can, you can see what you're... you're yeah, yeah, it's just not... Yeah. Is that straightened it up? Yeah. So, yeah, just that, and I'll take it out of camp mode. I mean, camp mode's good for drive ins as well, like when you go to the drive in and, the, and you don't set it to something like with that feature, it'll just keep turning itself off, so, or the sound will keep turning off. So, I just put it in camp mode and then yeah. you can sit there and watch the movie and sitting on the wrong keep side. the sound. How is the power consumption in keep mode? What's that, sir? What is the power consumption in keep mode? Keep mode. Um, keep mode was the to set the temperature in the car. So if you go to the shops and you want, um, yeah, you want to keep it. <coughs> How much power is the engine? That question. Is, how much power is sort of consumed when you keep it in that keep mode? Um. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to guess it depends on what, what it's set at and what the temperature is outside and how hard it's working and how long you're leaving it for. Um, but I'll be using this energy screen to be checking that just to see. Um, but my guess is going to be a few percent. They're pretty efficient though. So if I say... I'd say it's about 25 to 50 watt hours. You know, if you think that your air conditioners, if you turn it off when you're driving, you're consuming you know, a bit less, and when you turn the air conditioner on, it consumes a little bit more. It's, it's pretty marginal, and, and yeah. it, it's, it's you know, only a fraction of what we'd use actually for driving the car. Oh, okay. yeah. So currently, this is showing us the energy consumed in the last, you know, few hours. Um, you know, since we've been parked here, and the, um, mm, it doesn't say climate there, does it? Well, screen no. times, yeah, 4.2%. Well, yeah, but nothing else has come up. <coughs> yeah, since last drive. So, so it's been sitting there all morning with the air control on it to use 4.2%. Yeah, so if I say since last charge, Beautiful. So, if you have a phone connected and you receive um, a text message, it will pop up on the screen and the car will re can read the message to you. You just need to hit the right hand um, toggle on the steering wheel and that will read the message out to you. You can also talk back to the car to respond. Um, sometimes that doesn't work very well. Depends how fast you talk. Sometimes um, Louie can't keep up with me and it and might get some of my words wrong. And do you have to press the toggle to do that? Yes. To yeah. That? yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll have a little message on the bottom that says, you know, click the right, right wheel to reply or double click to dismiss. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, just a, I think we've got most of those yeah. now. I just, just want a couple of things. The, yeah. So on the temperature, if you t if you tap either side of the temperature, you can tap, move the temperature up and down, and it pops up a little quick menu that you can just quickly slide it to whatever temperature you want, and gives you a quick few quick options. The volume control does the same sort of thing. It's, you can tap left or right a bit to change the volume, 
and it's got a little settings button next to there that if you want to go into more detail and play with your equalizer and stuff like that as well. Um, if you want to get those Bluetooth settings and replying to messages, if you click on the car icon, I'll bring the menu up, and then click the Bluetooth icon at the top right hand corner, you can um, say whether it's syncing messages and you know, playing your messages back or not at your choice. You can also do that from the, the Bluetooth menu there, yeah. um, which is showing me what's connected and um, how to connect another phone. Um, so they're feature packs. Um, so a normal, you know, every Tesla delivered comes with autopilot, which will keep it in the lane. Uh, if you turn on auto steer, which is optional, like your car won't have auto steer and by default. If you turn on auto steer in the autopilot option, the car will lock in a lane and, and follow that lane as you drive along the highway. Um, but if you want to change lanes, for example, you'll have to just cancel that, change lanes manually, and then reset it. Whereas if you've got an enhanced autopilot, it'll have automatic lane change enabled, so you can just put the indicator on and it will change lanes on a multi-lane highway for you. It'll do auto park, so you drive past a car park and stop, and on the, on the car screen it will show a blue box where the car park, it detected a car park. You can click on that car park and it will back into it. So is that on auto or enhanced? If you bought enhanced autopilot, enhanced. yeah, yeah, or all false false self driving. So enhanced is seven and and then false self driving is ten eight or something. Um, so yeah, right, okay, so um, so uh, yeah, so you get a, you just get a few extra features, sort of premium, sort of you know, um, smart features with enhanced autopilot. Um, summon, so you have a remote control in the car, drive it back and forth. So, which is, you know, I've got the full self driving pack on my car, and yeah, you can drive it in and out of your garage, which is handy if you're a bit narrow or you know, narrow car space and things like that. But yeah. People at work that can't park properly, you can just jam them in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> park like 10 millimeters away from their door. Although it won't do summons on public roads. No, public spaces. No. Um, it'll do forward reverse summon, but it won't do. You know, come, come, to, come you. to me type stuff other than in private car parks. Mm -hmm. It also doesn't like steep gradients and things like that, so it can be a bit limited in places. So, so just a normal autopilot, you say that if you've got the lane, yeah. stay in the lane thing, but if you want to change lanes, you have to... Yeah, you just sort of, you, you can push the steering, like you put the indicator on, and just turn the steering wheel, and you feel it sort of snap out of, oh. you know, like the, you, let, you feel it let go of the steering wheel. Like it, it, it feel, when you're driving with um, auto steer on, it feels like it's holding the steering wheel as well, like the car's holding the steering wheel, and you all you got to do is just force it a bit, and it'll snap out. Or you tap the lever up to cancel it, and get the same effect. Oh, so the right hand. Yeah, the same lever you pull down to enable it. If you push it up, it will disable it. Cancel, I often it. drive. Um, and set the speed purely because you know some of the roads I travel down you know the speed limit changes from 70 to 80 back to 70 and then to 60 so I just um, set it at the um, I have it set to set when I tap it down to set at the speed I'm going and then I just use the right hand toggle to up and down so as I drive along and the speed limit changes Sometimes the car might recognise some of those changes and change it automatically, and other times I just use the toggle. Uh, and is that different to the system drive? <coughs> oh, auto steer. Like, yeah, auto steer, yeah. like the old cruise control. No, that yeah, is so cruise control. One, one, one taps cruise, uh, double yeah. taps auto steer. Uh, if the speed limits change and the car is indicating a, a, you know, an accurate measure of what the speed limit is, you can hold the lever down for half a second and that will update the cruise speed to match the, yeah, the, the speed sign so speed. The toggle. Yeah. And the you can scroll, scroll the, wheel, the right wheel up and down will be one kilometre increments if you click it each click, or you flick it and you've got a five kilometre increment. So you can pretty quickly go from you know, 60 to 80 by just giving it four flicks. Yeah. Four, four quick flicks and it'll go updating. Yes. Oh. And that's, that's the because I haven't got all that kind of mm. um, so is that just on the... Yeah. Toggle? What's on your cruise control? On the cruise control. Yeah, so you, you enable auto steer in the autopilot settings. In the, yeah. Can you set yourself? Like you're not going to... 
Or if I didn't. I've used it a fair bit. I'm always you know, fairly nervous about it, but um, it hasn't come into my car yet. <laughs> we um, had a trial. It's a lot better than it used to be. Yeah, we used the trial over Christmas when they yeah. gave it to us for free, and yeah, it was fun. Just to, you know, not probably not something that we'd pay five or seven thousand dollars for, but you know, it worked. It worked reasonably well. The other thing when you're in the what they call autopilot, which is really probably more like cruise control, is a phantom braking. And you'll see in a lot of the Facebook forums that people talk about it, but really look hard to what the car is seeing. Um, I drive up and down the Gold Coast Highway a lot towards the airport and if I am in the left hand lane and someone is going to hop into their car that's parked on the side of the road, Bluey will slow down and only because it's detecting a person on the road. Um, also if I'm in the right hand lane and there's people standing in the medium strip trying to cross, it will slow down as well because it can see them and I mean most of the time you know I've seen it as well but it has happened to me um, when it's been a bit darker and it kind of just made me a little bit more observant because I was obviously just cruising along probably singing to the radio not taking much notice and yes there was a person standing there that you know so what happened? So it just way automatically way? breaks okay. yeah so and you'll feel the Yep, yep, so I can just put my foot on the accelerator and, yeah, so I, I usually drive, when I have it in that um, autopilot, I usually drive with my foot sort of hovering over the accelerator because then I can, um, yeah, just adjust it when when I need to. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I just find that where I have the biggest problem is shadow because I'm always looking at shadows. So if I have a dull morning because I go to a lot of tree area yeah. on my way to and from so if there's a bright morning and there's really solid shadows, she's, she's yeah. on so, the so it's time. AI, right? So it's, it's using pattern matching. It's looking for things that look like people or look like cars. And in flickering shadows of trees, there will be for a split instant at some point a bit of a shadow that looks a bit like a person. And it will go, ah, oh, there's a person in front of the car. And you know, can stop quite suddenly. Like, yeah. It, it, it will ultimately get to automatic emergency braking where it will slam on the brakes to avoid an accident with a car or a person if it thinks it, like it thinks that they're in imminent danger of being in front of you. I've had that so it can, twice yeah. in, the, in the car since I've had it. Yeah. And the way people tailgate, they mm. I'm going to end up with one in And that's their fault. Oh, I thought yeah, yeah. Just, just to be really clear, like, like they're following you too closely well, and one, they're not ready for an emergency situation. One thing but you can try, if you're finding a fair bit of phantom braking happening in those shadows, try recalibrating um, the cameras and do it on a really bright day and take it along a road with a lot of those really distinct shadows on it and let it learn okay. the autopilot that that can improve it. It won't completely eliminate it, but that can improve it sometimes. Such it's a way to try and learn that the route that I take every day, no shadows are going to be there. Um, it will. Um, so, for those yet. emergencies, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, Do you have to press a button and tell it to calibrate? Oh, uh, that was in the yeah. service menu, the, the you calibrate order. You may just need to decide that that section you don't use cruise yeah. control and you actually, oh my like god, have to drive the car. <laughs> yeah. so I don't believe that the car learns, so I think it will learn eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So so just do, do try the camera so recalibration, but do it under those, those circumstances. Really bright day, take it through an area with lots of those distinct shadows, and it can improve that phantom braking okay, situation. Thank you. Um, the, the other case where it can happen is if you're driving along and you can see you know, down there, a car turning across in front of you, and you know they're going to be well and truly gone before you get there maintaining oh, yeah, the speed limit. Does. The car will see it's it cool. and break it. Yeah. So pay attention, as Luke said, to what is going on around the car and have your foot ready. And that will even happen if you're driving along and a car pulls out in front of you and you don't um, reduce your foot or reduce the acceleration, the car will come up with a warning yeah. and tell you. 
It would also happen if you're in the right-hand lane and the car in front of you pulls into a slip lane to turn and then they've slowed down and you're going past them and it sees a car yeah. very close to you that's slowing, it will brake on you. So pay attention to these things. If you're using your um, cruise control around town because it's a comfortable way to drive, it's an efficient way to drive, just remember, as these things happen, that foot has to be over the accelerator. You just apply a little gentle pressure and it will override that brake. I just get the feeling that it's just because the code is so rough. Yeah, so Isn't that I'll really talk a little bit about uh, Tesla and Australia. Um, so Tesla, you know, you would have seen YouTube videos of full soft driving in the US, right? So they've got, you know, much later, more advanced software that they run on the cars in the US that um, you know, can take city streets and do roundabouts and traffic lights and figure these sorts of things out. Uh, and that's where all of their development effort is going. And they're, they're a US company, right? So they, they develop things for the US market first and then they bring them out, you know, more globally. And there's the same thing with auto steer and autopilot uh, and automatic lane changes. We got those, you know, a year or two after the US did. They, they optimise them for their market first and then they work on getting them out globally. So we're in the same situation at the moment where they've, they've made a quantum leap forward to this full soft driving software package that they're running, you know, betering in the US at the moment. We are still running the same software fundamentally in autopilot and the same sort of features around auto steer and its performance and how it deals with shadows and all that sort of stuff. As we did 18, 24 months ago, our, our software, you know, there's no value in Tesla spending effort on improving the sort of generation of software that we're running because eventually it's all going to get thrown out and replaced with the new FSD software, right? So we've seen no significant improvements to how our autopilot performs in this time. It's been, as someone who's had their car for three years, it's pretty frustrating to sort of just see the same old problems in the same old places over and over again and the same old faults. But <coughs> from Tesla's point of view and, and, and their business, uh, you can understand why they have not spent much money on that beyond fixing no, clear safety issues. No, not for the price I paid issues. for the car. I don't understand that at all. Sorry? Not for the price I paid for the car. I do not understand that. Yeah. Um, no, and certainly there could be an argument made that they should spend more money on markets outside the US to improve their software for you know, driving situations that are beyond the US market uh, and software versions that they're running on millions of cars that aren't inside the US market. Um, but there's, that's the broad you know, reason. That's why we are where we are today with things that don't get fixed in autopilot particularly because realistically the autopilot software that's running in Australian cars today is all going to get thrown out at some point in the future when they roll out that full self driving software here. Yeah, but see, I feel my car learns. I felt Bluey learned roads that I took regularly after I took them. And originally when I got my car, I was a bit like um, this data sharing on this screen. I was a bit like, oh, no, I don't want them knowing where I'm going or what I'm doing. But I've since changed my mind and decided that I believe the data that my car is collecting is making my car smarter, then I should share it so that it does it for everyone, and yeah. whether that's true or not, but yeah. There are certainly some things that are that can change and improve if you complain about them or lock them like that around the speed limits and things like that, but that data is you know, sort of somewhat separate to the AI that runs autopilot, um, what, knowing what speed limits are where and how that sort of stuff behaves, and that changes over time. If I'm in autopilot and I'm just, I'm going to work down in Coolangatta, I'm going down the Gold Coast Highway, I turn off at Stewart Road, the speed limit changes, yeah. And the car will automatically change the speed limit as I take the turn, slow the car down, it will take that turn, it will change to the limit, and then when I come out of the turn, the limit goes back up and it changes that all automatically. Yeah. Yeah, so it's still the cruise, just want to do what I do, right? Yeah, well it just stays on, like, you know. So it's so just the speed. 100, yeah. 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 So it's, it, you know, you think of it as, as cruise control is managing accelerator and brake for you and helping you accelerate and brake, whereas auto steer is also helping you steer at the same time. The autopilot. Auto steer. So, yeah, yeah with, so broadly, that whole suite of software, the, right. the you know, things that assist you in how you drive the car, is called autopilot, auto steer, auto brake, auto accelerate, cruise, all that. So, their cruise it's, control, that's they the just whole call category it. is called autopilot, and the yeah. 
whole solution. Mm -hmm. um, so auto steer is a feature. So you're turning on that auto steer feature, and that's what oh, we'll do the, the double, double, double tap, and it'll lock in the lane. Yeah. But you'll need it turned on on this screen, the yeah, one at the top yeah, there. Yeah. You'll need to turn that on for it to steer. Yeah. But yeah, if you're just yeah, if you're just doing the cruise control style of it, they call that's, that that's autopilot. Always. No. So that is a double. Well, no, sorry, the whole software solution is called autopilot. Like their whole sort of assistance features, like whether it's accelerating brake or steering, is called autopilot. It's just cruise. So yeah, yeah it's it's a it's adaptive cruise control. So it will yeah. follow the car in front. If there's a car in front of you, it will slow down for that. Well, that's just you know, the, the following distance. You can change the follow distance by clicking the the right wheel left and right. You can change how close it follows the car in front. Uh, and you can scroll the wheel up and down to change what speed it's it's but target speed. Working, even if I have a turned autopilot on. Well, no, there's no switch for autopilot. There's a switch for auto steer. Yeah, so the adaptive cruise control will work without you turning the auto steer on. Yeah, cruise cruise is always there, and uh, if you don't want to use it, don't turn it on. Like don't don't yeah, don't don't, don't single tap down when you're in drive. Yeah. So can I just ask a question? So a cruise control, you don't use auto steer, you don't put yeah. that on. And then how do you actually do cruise control? Is that just single tap down. Same, same, yeah, so just tap, tap the right stalk down. Just once? Yes, once. And that's cruise control? Yeah. 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 What I found was when I was going along at 100 and then it changed down to 80, I slowed down to 80 and then I tried to tap it again to sort of block in the 80. You need to tap and hold it for about oh. half a second and that will reset the same. Or you can tap the, you'll have the speedometer on the screen. You can you can tap the sign to go to the speed limit of the sign. You can tap the speedometer to set it to the speed that you're actually driving. So roadworks, you, you manually go down to 40 in roadworks and, and tap the speed, and put cruise on. And as soon as you do that, tap the speedometer and it will keep doing the speed you're actually going now. Yeah. Or, or you can just use the toggle on the side and go up and down. Yeah, but, but if you if the traditional speed limit for that road was 100 mm -hmm. and the road works at 40, then you can frantically yeah, yeah, free yeah, yeah. scrolling or you can just tap, tap the speedometer it. and it's straight there. Yeah. There's one pedal driving. When you take the foot off the accelerator, yeah. does that bring the brake light on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. So, so yeah, there's a, I think the, um, ISO sort of standard for that is if it's decelerating at more than 1G or, or 0.1G, it will bring the tail lights on, which is what it does. Yeah. And you'll be able to see that on the screen. Yeah, when you're driving along in your car, the car's lights the, the will come little, like, little icon, you can zoom, you have that little icon of the car oh. on the screen while you're driving along, you can scroll that around and look around the car and you can zoom in, pinch and zoom, <laughs> and if you zoom in you can see the brake lights and indicators all come on on that car, so you can see what's happening on the outside. Um, with indicators and brake lights and things like that, even if the car computer crashes, all of those things keep working. Like if the screen crashes um, and is rebooting or something, which has happened a couple, handful of times to me, you can keep driving, the indicators still work, you just can't hear or see them, which can be a little disorienting, but um, the indicators on the outside of the car are all physically separate from the computer. The computer is very much just running that display, all the safety features of the car are all separate. And the only problem is you don't know your speed. Yeah. yeah. But if you put the maps on your phone and have it in the thing, you can see your speed. <laughs> when, when we were driving back from Victoria last year in November, something that the car has never done before, or I have never done it, and it's the, to us which was very interesting, is that we were driving along, we were using lane control, speed control, and coming up the highway on the other side was this hot rod. And I just went, oh, Dave, look at that hot rod. And I just turned my head, and the inside camera picked up that my eyes went that way, went out the window, and it immediately flashed red, beeped at me like you would have believed, and slowed the car down, and told me to take control of it. And my car's the same age as what Luke's is. It's not a new one. It's three years old. So it, yeah. it does have a very good safety thing in it and just because I turned my head a bit too far it went mad at us so please <laughs> be aware of that and also be aware that it wants you to hold the steering wheel don't just rest your hands because it'll yeah. flash blue and say you take control of the car in, in so auto steer it's 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 not detecting your hands on the wheel strictly some cars actually have a little sensor that you know it's like touch sensitive like your phone's touch touch sensitive 
what it's detecting is torque on the steering wheel, so a little bit of pressure. So what you'll find is people doing the Tesla lean, which is you know, resting your elbow on the window frame and just waiting, and just holding the steering wheel, and just letting the weight of your hand rest on the steering wheel. Just tells the car that you're there and that you're ready to take control, that your hands are on the wheel. Uh, you'll get a, if you put both of your hands on the steering wheel, the weight's average and there's no torque on the steering wheel. There needs to be a bit of pressure either to the left or to the right, and that's what will keep the car comfortable that you're holding the steering wheel properly. And it won't, so won't be at you to say that to take a hold of the steering wheel. What do you mean? Uh, the computer world is a computer crashes, yep. or you just find object or something, you know, it's screen is damaged. Oh, as Paul was saying, you could use your phone as a speedo, like when you run the phone app, it's got a speedometer there. Um, no, the car still works, everything works, you just can't change stuff and you can't see what's going on. But go in and drive, you can drive it, you can move it around, you can get it to service, whatever. Um, I thought it was one thing with the indicators that you, if the computer's cracked, if the, screen, if the screen was just cracked, you'd still hear the indicators through the speakers, because the, the indicator, the tick-tock noise, isn't a traditional actual relay in the car like it is in an old car. It's oh, just a sound effect that's played through the speakers. Um, so you don't hear the, the tick tock of the indicators and you could leave your indicator on while you're driving along because you don't know that it's on because you can't see because it's on the outside of the car. That's really mm -hmm. the one thing that I'm a bit <coughs> worried about when I'm driving as the computer relays. I mean, you'll, you'll, if you go doom scrolling on, on YouTube, you will find videos of people who take to their screens with a hammer and bash the, and we don't recommend you do this at home children, but they, they will bash the, the Jesus out of their centre screen and smash it to pieces and ev everything keeps operating um, for, you know, driving the vehicle. At some point you lose <laughs> the visibility of it on that screen. But, you know, remember it, it is kind of a iPad with wheels. And like every electronic gadget, occasionally there'll be a bit of a glitch in the screen, like your phone will occasionally freeze up. So there will be, there could be occasions where there's a bit of a glitch and your screen goes black. Um, as Luke said, you can still steer, the indicators still work, your brakes all still work, so you can safely pull yourself over somewhere, press those two buttons, hold them down, do a reset, and in the majority of situations, It'll reboot itself and it'll come back. Uh, if it sure, doesn't, sure before the computer rebooted before yeah. when we changed yeah. the wheel config. If uh, it doesn't, in, yeah, you've got service seconds. on your phone. Get straight onto Tesla service, and they can look at you remotely yeah. over the air and let you know what's going on. And if it's a major fault, they'll tell you and organise someone to come out and pick you up. So, if your screen does go blank, you will freak out momentarily. Take a deep breath pull over safely somewhere, do the reset. Both buttons, both buttons, and pull on the brake. It'll typically automatically detect this crash. And it'll go black for a minute, touch the brake again, little T will come up, it will build thinking, reset itself, and come back. Should I regularly go reset every month or not? It doesn't matter. Not literally. No. Like, unless it, never, unless never, never occasionally never. after an update, you'll get a few weird glitches. Do a reset and that tends to sort everything out. But generally, unless it gives you problems, leave it alone. Ain't broke, don't fix it. <coughs> You'll be surprised yep. when you get your Tesla, the car will tell you what to do. The car will tell you how to drive, where to go and what to think. <laughs> Can we have uh, the bits and bones and whatever, the dongs and things? Can we turn that down? Yeah, in um, settings there's Joe mode. Yeah, I've done that. It's still too bad. Yeah, um, fundamentally there's safety important yeah, messages <laughs> that you should be aware of. You should, you, should, you, should, you should always be aware of what mode the car's in. If you don't think what it, while it's on when it is or vice versa, that can be a bit dangerous. So the, the noises keep you up to date with where it is and whether that mode's been engaged properly. Upsets, passengers. Hmm? Upsets, passengers. The, the noise. Yeah. yeah. They don't know um, what it's doing. Mm -hmm. your, your passenger has heightened hearing. 
Um, so Joe Mode is its own safety. Um, it's got a little info box. So enabling Joe Mode reduces the volume of your car's chimes. Quieter chimes continue to alert the driver effectively, but minimise disruption to passengers in the rear seats, i.e. Joe's kids. Apparently there's some dude called Joe who requested that the noise be a bit less fervent. So Apparently he complained to Elon and they created this. Yeah. Why it's not called quiet mode, I don't know. Yeah be a little more sensible to most normal people, but that's what it is. Yeah, I was driving on the most boring road in Australia, in Victoria, it's a section of the Hume Highway. Yep. There's nowhere to pull off. It's, it's a horrible section of road. And there was a sign saying, uh, tide takes a power nap now, so I did. And the car fortunately did wake me up when I hit the um the white line as I was yeah. drifting towards the um the opposite the cars coming the opposite direction. Yeah. So it's the normal. first time in my life I've ever the, the in the same the way. In safety, there's lane departure warning. So if you wander out of your lane, it will, it'll vibrate the wheel and beep at you. So for all of these driving aids that do make doing long distance travel less tiring and less stressful, there are still some basic biological you know, imperatives going on here about our attention spans as human um, beings. And it doesn't mean because you can whack it into autopilot um, and, you know, even full self-drive on freeways that you can just completely switch off and drive until your battery runs flat and then recharge it somewhere. It is absolutely appropriate to keep taking your normal driver, reviver, pauses. And then you, know, that, that you pull up at a charger and plug in. By the time you've gone to the loop, got a cup of coffee, had a quick bite to eat and come back. If you're at a fast charger, you've got enough to take you the next 200 k's to the next rest pause. You're not actually doing more stops than you would in an ice vehicle. But that's the problem with that section of road. Yeah. There is no rest stop at all. Um, for hundreds of k's. It's absolutely shocking. And there's there's also something else. High accidents, no kidding. That's um, the US so, you know, the, the, the current soft, autopilot software uses the interior camera to look at you and see that you're not not where you're looking. Our software doesn't do that. Yeah. So, yeah, that we know it'll, tell, it'll tell it, you know, you're going to sleep and stuff like that. The it does, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the first thing. But the uh, internal camera is watching yeah. you at yeah. yeah, the internal camera, yeah. Well, you know, we tr eye tracking and making sure that you're paying attention to the screen, not to, to the road. And, and for all of the lovely features, the manual, the screen, everything will tell you repeatedly, numerous times, that you always remain responsible for the operation of the vehicle. You. Same, 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 same. as any car. So if you are running along on, on traffic aware cruise control and you know that you get phantom braking on that stretch of road and that people are tailgating you, Remain alert, be aware, watch what's going on around you. Have your foot ready to override these things. Because you remain responsible it. for the function of your car. I don't use 100% of the time. If I've got somebody tailgating me now because it's just too dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all, the autopilot's a, a, a term used from aircraft and people get, you know, say that it's an inappropriate way to, to name it and it's not because autopilot Traditional autopilot in a plane is really basic. It like maintains your altitude. Like it's it's not delaying you and landing you or doing anything. It's just it's just helping. It just takes the stress off it. It's it's like you know having a, a an assistant helping you along. It's not taking responsibility. It's just making your job easier. There, there are driver assistance features that make your job easier to do. So I certainly find that going on big drives that I'm. Much more refreshed and alive after you know. I have, I'm from Rockhampton. I drive to Rockhampton all the time. I arrive in Rockhampton after driving for seven hours, and I'm happy and peachy, and can go out to dinner and enjoy myself. Whereas when I was driving my ice car before this, without these driver assistance features, you go and you get to Rockhampton, and you're like, I'm going to bed now because this is you know I've been working hard all day. Even just coming home from the Sunshine Coast to the Gold Coast yeah. on a Sunday bump, afternoon. Bumping above the traffic. Yeah. Bumping above the traffic, yeah. it's the, the best feature. Auto steer and traffic aware cruise control in bumping above the traffic, fantastic. So much safer, you know, you're not getting, you know, you take your eyes off the road, bumping above the traffic normally, and you'll be you know, driving up the back of someone.
with autopilot and, and um, yeah. Android cruise much better. Any more questions before we break for morning tea?